So this is the first problem of today's code shift tip two. And in this problem, we are given that, uh, that we have an array A of size N and N is more than or equals to two. And we have defined a function FA, which is this, I'll explain this in a moment. And we have to find the maximum value of FA that we can get after rearranging the array elements. So let's see what does this function. So f of a is submission of i from 1 to n is being chased of So f of a is this f of a right so let's break this down this is basically submission and i will go from 1 to n minus 1 so let's see if we let's say like let's compute this thing so this is nothing but for 1 it is a 1 plus a 2 this is for i is equals to 1. Then for i equals to 2, this is. Then for i equals to 3, this is. Going forth, like for i equals to n, this will be. For i equals to n minus 1, this will be. So now if you look at this closely, every term other than 1 and n is occurring twice. Right? Every term will occur twice. So since every element in array A is like in the problem constraints, it's given that every element in array A is more than or equals to 1. Mm -hmm. So, since every element will contribute in positive way only, we should, what should we do? We should have all the elements that are as big as possible in between and the smaller values at the end points. Why? Because these will contribute, these will come in some, this, all these elements will come twice and these elements will come once. So, what we have to do? We just need to sort this array A. Like if we have to find the maximum value of this function, we can just sort the array A. Sort the array A. Then find the total and from this subtract the two smallest values. Start us at 0th index and 1st index. And you need to multiply this with 2. Is this thing clear? How did I come up with this? Yes, no. Okay, what about others? Is anyone having any doubt on this? Okay. So someone said again, like, can you tell me like what part you didn't understand? Can you tell me like, Specifically, which part you couldn't understand in this? Like, I'll explain that only. You just need to, like, see every element. Because if you write, if you, like, break this function, like, what is this? This is nothing but summation of these values, right? So, only the first and the last is coming once. Every other value will come twice. So in like, since every value is more than one, you should keep the smaller values at endpoints and every other values in between. So that all the values that are coming twice should be as big as possible, as large as possible. 
he has to get the maximum sum. Is it clear now? So let me show you the implementation. So this is the implementation in this. I have first taken the number of test cases in input. Then I have taken n, that is the size of array. Then I've taken array elements. Then I've sorted this, I found the total sum. And finally I've printed my total times two minus the first or the smallest two array element values. Is it clear? Okay, and by the way, is my voice is clear, right? Is anyone feeling that my voice is low or? Like you, you are having a hard time understanding what I'm trying to say. Okay. So let's go to the next problem. So in the next problem, we're given that we have an array A of length n. And in this, again, we are given a function fa like this. And we need to consider this as a cyclic array. So like the, the element which is can be considered next to like after nth element is first element and we have to minim find the minimum value of f of a across like we can arrange or rearrange this array a as like we, as we want and actually this is not an array this is a permutation so across all permutations of length n we need to find the minimum value of f a so let's look at what this function does So we have F. This is what we given, right? And we have to find So let's look at what this function is giving us. So like you will have to like you'll add minimum of a1 and a2 plus minimum of and like this it will continue and finally you'll have to add minimum of a n and a1 so if you look at this the array is like this so first minimum of these two then minimum of these two then minimum of these two then minimum of these two and then finally minimum of this and this right so if I have one here, this is taking this is taking care of so like one is the minimum value, right? So one is taking care of this thing and this thing. So let me mark these. Just draw them in one side only, right? These are the and this one, like it, it is a circular, right? So these are the one, two, three, four, five minimums. One, two, I think I have missed some. Yes, I missed C. This is up to here, this is up to here, this is up to here. This one, up to here, like. Minimum of these two, then minimum of these two, and then finally 
minimum of this and this first element. So this is what we'll add. Now, one is taking care of which, which two minimums. So let's mark these as this one and this one. So value of this will also be one and this for this minimum, the value will be minimum value is one, minimum is one. I don't have to worry about the element which is here and here right now. For this, let's keep the next minimum element two. So two will take care of this and this. Then three here, three will take care of this and this. And that's it. So what one came twice, two came twice, and three came twice in my final minimum. So is there any other lift? I think still like a heart drawn. It. This one is left, right? Like minimum of last two is left. I'm not taking minimum of last two, these two. Right? So for this, what should be the next minimum after I have used one, two, and three? What should be the next minimum? It should be four, right? So I should keep four here. And four will just take care of this thing. Why? Because this one is already getting one. So I got four ones. So one plus two plus three came twice and I got four ones. And in case my array size was even, like let's say this was even, then this four wouldn't have been there. Just one plus two plus three twice. Otherwise, if the array size is odd, you'll get this, like if n is odd, you'll get an extra n plus one by two. Otherwise, you'll just get this thing twice that is from one to n by two like sum of all of these twice because these are the small smallest elements and each element can just take care of two like uh, two minimums because in one minimum you are taking like considering two elements so one element can take care of either like this minimum and this minimum so from one to n by two each minimum will each of these values will take care of two minimums in case of odd, you need to consider this also. Otherwise, in case of even this is an answer. Is it clear? Then this is how you can visualize this, how the minimums are being calculated. Is it clear? What about others? Okay, so let me show you the implementation. So in this I have taken, like I've taken number of test cases, then I have taken n, if n is even, I have just found what is n by two, and this is the sum of first n, n by two natural numbers. Otherwise, I have done the same thing, but to this I have added n plus one by two. That's it. Somebody asked, we can't change the position of one. See, this is a cyclic array. This is one of the arrangements, like how you can do this. One, like this is a cyclic array. You can start from, like you can keep one here also. Then also it would take care of two. Like it will take care of this and this. If you keep one in between. Okay, got it. Like it is a cyclic. So like uh, this is just one of the arrangements. Okay. This is clear to everyone, right? Okay, so let's go to the next problem. So in this problem, we are given that again, we are given an array A of 
which is a permutation and this is the function now and we have to find the minimum of this function over all permutations. So let's see what is this function. So this is it. Now you have to minimize this. Again. So again, let's try to visualize. Like this is a very, this is simpler than the last problem. See why? You can decide. See, this is a permutation of size n. So this is a permutation of size n and in this permutation somewhere in between there will be a n. It can be in between, it can be towards last or it can be at first position. But there will be a n somewhere, right? Yes, no. It, like everybody agrees with this, right? Okay, if there is a n somewhere, the two maximums like there will be two maximum for every position like uh, considering the last like this position has two maximums the first one is this the second one is considering this element and this last right so every po index has is included in two maximums so those two maximums whichever involve this position that is has n will get n only Right, so you'll get n plus n, you'll get at least this much. Now, after this point, since this has already, like you have already got down one of these ends, like what you should do, you can keep like this. So, for this, you'll get. Like for this, you got n. For this, you'll get n minus 1. So other than n, you'll get every value once. Like n minus 2, you'll get once. n minus 1, you'll get once. So on, like all the way up till, you will have 1 here. And you won't get this one because this will be 2 and this one was n itself. So other than this one, you'll get everything. So plus all the way up till. Is it making sense? Yes, no. If you try to rearrange this in any other way, you'll end up like with having this thing, something like this n3, n minus 2. So this is n minus 1. This is not optimal. Why? Because n is already coming twice. Now n minus 1 will also come twice. And I want the bigger values to just come once. So that's why this is the optimal way that n just have a cyclic order of n, n minus 1, n minus 2 and cyclically 1. So that only, see, anyway n is going to come twice. Other than that, all these values should come just once. So what is the sum? The sum is nothing but you can calculate the sum from 1 to n, like the sum of first n natural numbers from this subtract 1 and add n, you'll get the sum of this thing, right? So let me show you the implementation. So first take n as input, then this is the sum of first n natural numbers from this subtract one and add n. So you'll get n two times and every number from n minus one to two ones. Is it clear?
Is anyone having any doubt in the implementation? Okay, so let's go to the next problem. So in the next problem, we're given that there's an array A of size n, n is more than or equals to 2, and we have this function again, the function that was in first problem. Then in this, we need to answer Q queries, each with a single integer x and determine if there exists a rearrangement of array A such that the value of this function is x and if there exists a valid rearrangement, print it, otherwise print minus 1. So this is again like, where is it? Like this is the function, right? So in this we already know that every value then the first and the last occur twice and the first and the last value occur once. So if what was our answer, by the way, for this problem? It was this thing. So we need to find an arrangement for which x, like this is x, right? Yes, no. So, like, let's go back to the problem first and let's look at the constraints. So if you look at the constraints, n is between 2 and 50. So in worst case, n is not more than 50. So n is 50. So what, how many, like, we can, like, among all pairs, like we can compute all pairs of i and j, such that i-th element is at first place and j-th element is at last place. Why do we need this? Such that we can get all the, like, using all combinations, like that is, that way we'll get all possible values of this x. A permutation of like is having a size this much 50 and array is having this much size. So there are only n into in worst case, like let's take an upper bound. So n into n, not more than n square pairs of ij such that I can choose the ith element to be first and the jth element to be last. This will actually be n into n minus 1 by 2. n into n minus 1, not n into n minus 1 by 2. N, yes, n into n minus 1 by 2. Because if ith element is first and jth element is last, this is same as jth element being first and ith element being last. But anyway, the upper bound is n square. So we'll come calculate the possible, like what all possible values are. And we don't have to just print yes and yes or no. We need to print the arrangement, right? How can we do that? So there are numerous ways to do this. See, let's say this is, we are computing this in a possible. Let's say there's a map or you can do this using array also. But let's say there's a map which gives us whether this sum is possible or not. Let We can create another map for which we get, like for any value x, we get, if it's possible, we'll get i and j that these are the two values that this should be the value at this index whatever the value in array a is at this index should occur at first place and this should occur at last place after that we can just iterate from 1 to n first the first value is fixed then print the remaining n minus 2 values and the, then print the last index value is it like this will make sense once i show you the implementation First, I have taken the number of test cases and input. Then I have taken the number of, like the size of array and the number of queries. Then I'm taking the array A as input. So this will give me whether some sum is, like whether some X for some like F of A, for whether it's possible for me to arrange the array in such a way that I can get the total as this, like map of total is possible or not. So if MP of X is true or one, then it means that it's possible for me to rearrange the array in such a way that I'll get the final value of function as x. And if this is true, then this index, this IND array or IND map will give me the pairs. 
which the first that like this needs to be at first place and this needs to be at the last place. Then I'm just like brute forcing, like I'm iterating over each and every possible pair of this array. And this sum is possible and it's possible by keeping this at first place, the value at this index at first place and the value which is at this index at last place. This is my total. Then for answering queries, just taking X as input, first checking whether this is possible or not. If it's possible, first print the element which were, which is at indexes like giving me the this pair. So the first is I. So whatever, like this is the index, whatever value is at this index needs to be printed first. Then print the remaining values, skipping these I and J and finally printing the last element. So this is if it's possible, otherwise just print minus one. Is it clear? You can apply two pointer also. Yes. Any other doubts? Okay, so let's go to the next problem. In this problem, we're given that Elise and Bob are playing a game on a pile of hen stones. And in Elise's turn, she can remove at least one and at most A stones. While Bob can remove at least one and at most B stones. So the person who takes the last stone wins. So we need to predict who will be the winner if both players play optimally. There are around 10 to the power 5 test cases and N, A, B are both are all between 1 and 10 to the power 9. So we need to find answer for each test case in constant time. So this, let's try to break this problem first. T. What happens if, let's say, lights can remove number of stones between, remove between more than or equals to one and less than or equals to A. Bob can remove number of stones between. So this is, these are the limits. Now, let's say if like at start only, let's consider the case when A is more than B. So if at, let's say if at start, N was less than a, then who would have win? Allies would have win, right? At that point only. Yes, no. And now, if n, f, if n is more than it, this also means that this is more than b. So what allies can do is just remove one stone. If you slice remove just one stone, then what is the like n could be either be more than or equals to a now, right? If Elisa removes, so this will still be more than b. So, what like Bob can never remove all the stones, and the like the chance will come back to Elise, and again, this thing like uh, this thing is already true. Allies needs to check this thing. Once this thing is true, that n is now less than equals to a, allies will win. So Bob will never win in this scenario, right? Why? Because see, this is clear to everyone. If n is more than a, we know that a is also more than b. Allies will just remove one stone. So n will now become more than or equals to a. This equal is coming extra. Now n is either more than or equals to a. 
but this value is still more than B. So Bob cannot remove all stones. So Bob can remove some stones and allies will get again another chance. Is it clear? So allies can always win. Anyone having any doubt? Okay, so now let's consider another case. Now, if A is less than B, that is, Bob can remove more stones during his turn. So, there are two scenarios. Who will win? Allies will win, right? Yes, no. Otherwise, Slice can remove some stones. Bob will get and now the same thing like if after Elias has, Elias has done in Bob's turn N is less than equals to B Bob wins or this thing is true for Bob also now that N is more than or equals to B like N is more than B and B is already more than A because of this thing, because of this condition. Bob will remove exactly one stone and allies will, now N will be more than or equals to B and B is already more than A. So allies can never remove all the stones. So Bob will win. Bob will win in this scenario. Bob wins. Is it clear? Or is anyone having any doubt in this? In this scenario, like in this scenario, this is broken into two parts. In this, allies was always winning. In this, if this is true, then allies will win. Otherwise, Bob will win. Clear? Yes, no. And now we have the last scenario. When A is equals to B. So now, let's see if you have to if both can remove at max, like at most same number of stones, then if, let's say if someone wants to win during their turn, let's say this is, if someone wants to win during their turn, they should be at max like between one and X stones, right? During their turn, if you, if let's say allies wants to win, allies should in, during allies' turn, they should be between one and X stones. If Bob wants to win, then during his turn, they should be between 1 and x stones. A and B are both equal and they are equals to x. So, if let's say during winner's turn, like anyone, if allies or Bob wants to be winner, during their turn, they should be between these stones. So, what is, what, which way we can guarantee that we'll always have this stone for winner? So, loser should have loser should have exactly x plus 1 stones. Why? Because you can remove anything between 1 and x. You will always lie in this range. Try try doing this. You can choose any value between 1 and x. You will lie between this range only after subtracting. Right? Yes, no. So loser should have exactly x plus 1 stones. Not more than this, not less than this. If, lose, if it is less than this, Loser will win. If it is more than this, loser can give x plus 1 stone. So, loser should have exactly this much. So, if loser is having this much, winner should have, winner can have anything between x plus 2 to x plus 1 x. Like, I have just, like, what I have done. See, in this, you can assume that the value was 0. So, to 0, I added 1 and x. Now, to this value, I'll add 1 and x. So x plus 2 and x plus 1 plus x. Now, winner should have in this, this is the first, like the last turn. This is the second last turn. Last turn. Second last. Third last. So in fourth last turn, loser should have, can someone tell me what should be the number of stones left? 
any one. This is two x plus one. Any one. Two x plus two exactly. See, you can subtract any number of stones between one and x, and you will the number of stones will lie between this range only. So there is a pattern here. Next, it will be three x plus three. So loser is having a multiple of x plus one stones. That's it. If whoever gets a multiple of this thing loses, is it making sense? Yes, no. What we can do? Pet start. If pet start n is a multiple of instead of x, let's say a. A and B are equal, right? So, multiple of A plus one, then Bob wins. Otherwise, N is not a multiple of A plus one, so like allies want to lose, but allies will make such a move that Bob will get a multiple of A plus one. It's always possible. Like uh, you can try doing this. Let's say there is some value N which is not multiple of A. Bob will exactly reduce reduce something between one and a, which will be less than a only because of course it does not a multiple of a. So like you can assume like this. N is like if n is a multiple of a plus one, this will be zero. If n is not a multiple of a plus one, this will be something which is non-zero. So whatever this value is, whatever this remainder is, this is what allies will. Remove in her first turn, and this value will always the remaining value will be between z like one and a. Why? Because c remainder is not equals to zero. This is not equals to zero, so it is of course more than equals to one. And if I am taking under modulo a plus one, this will be less than equals to it. So that's why. Elise can remove these many stones, and Bob will now Bob will get a multiple of a plus one. Else, Elise wins. Why? Because Bob gets multiple of Bob gets a multiple of n plus one. Is it clear? A plus one. So let me show you the implementation. This I have first taken the number of test cases as input. Then I have taken n, a, and b as input. If a is more than b, ally simply wins. If a is less than b, there are two cases. If n s was less than initially, like number stones is less than equals to a, ally will win. Otherwise, Bob will win. And finally, if a is equals to b, just check if initially n is a multiple of a plus one. If it is, Bob will win. Otherwise, ally will win. Is it clear? So that's it. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.